All right, let's get into it. First of all, this is a pretty personal topic, so thanks for sticking with me. Uh, let's talk about my experience having sex with a covert passive aggressive narcissist. Wow, I get kind of nervous talking about it, honestly, because I never thought I would be putting this kind of content out on to the internet. <laughs> so let's go ahead, let's get into it. My name is Chris Ivan. If you haven't seen me on this channel before, I just share things that have helped me in my life and that I hope make your life better as well. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive straight into it about my experience having sex with a covert passive aggressive narcissist. Also, I will say that um, this is very important for a reason that I don't want to tell you just yet. And I hope that you stick around for the end of the video because then it will make a lot of sense why this is very important for you to go through the same experience, well not experience, but through through the same exercise I'm about to go through with you. I'm, I guess in a way I'm gonna be doing an exercise live with you on camera where I will show you the before and after of my experience having sex with a covert passive aggressive narcissist and then I'm going to tell you something that will be an insane reflection of why this is so important and it will give you a lot of clarity into your relationship um, for the reason that I will be telling you at the end of the video but first I want to show you the example of me going through this exercise with you so here's what I'm going to do I am going to put myself in my shoes as I was when I first started having sex with a covert passive aggressive narcissist. Once I go through that experience and I tell you what that experience was like before, I will then put myself in my shoes again further down the relationship so that I can explain to you what it felt like during the later stages of the relationship when I was having sex with this person. And then we will be able to see the differences between the two situations. And then once we see the differences between the two situations, I will explain the larger reasoning for that behind the relationship. And I hope that by the end of the video, you will see that if you've had a similar experience to mine, I encourage you to do the same exercise, see how you feel and see so that you can understand what happened in your relationship and it gives you even more knowledge to be able to move on from the experience that you may have had dating and having sex with a covert passive aggressive narcissist. So let's get started. First off, I'm gonna imagine putting myself in my shoes right the first times we started having sex. And I can tell you what it felt like is that I can even remember it in my eyes. I was so excited and I was honestly like in love with this girl. I had been going through the love bombing stage, which is one of the things that I talk about in my previous video of the time that I dated a covert passive aggressive narcissist. You can check that video out. And I can tell you that the love bombing stage made me feel like the first times I was having sex with this girl. It made me feel like I was like truly in love for the first time. That's what it felt like. And it felt so happy. I felt ecstatic. It felt like I was sharing love with a person. It felt like I was being close with her. It felt like home. That is the best way I can put it. It felt like home. It felt safe. It felt secure. I felt great. I felt happy. I felt very masculine as being a guy. I felt very masculine. I felt very attractive. I felt like very strong. I felt like I could protect her. I felt like I was happy that she was allowing me to be in her world. I felt like I was grateful I felt like, hear me out, I felt like I was so powerful and like bigger than her in a way that was healthy, in a way that made me feel like I could take care of her. It made me feel like she allowed herself to be vulnerable with me and because she allowed herself to be vulnerable with me, it allowed me to take responsibility for her safety and for her well-being and for her willingness to trust me, seeing her in her most vulnerable. I felt really 
I guess, honestly, in a way, strong, very masculine, very powerful, and very happy. And if, you, if you're a girl and I'm kind of losing you here, stick with me. You know, maybe flip the roles a little bit. See, maybe you felt the other way and in the feminine. Maybe you felt very safe. You felt, you know, surrounded and contained. You know, continue with me. I'm just telling you my experience. And if you decide to do this exercise, you will be able to put everything into your own shoes as well. I also felt like at that time, I was very appreciated. You know, she, she would be looking into my eyes, like soul gazing, like deep into them. She would tell me the kindest things, but like they felt genuine at that time. They felt real. I felt appreciated. I felt seen. I felt important. I felt heard. I felt grateful and happy. And honestly, in a way, I guess I just felt very masculine and very loved and very, um, mature in a way. I felt like it was bringing out a parental side of me. It made me feel like I could be a father. That's how I felt. It made me feel like, obviously I did not want to have children with her yet. It was too early, but it made me feel like, man, like I am with a woman and I am a man and I could fill in a fatherly role if we were to have children. I felt very um, superior and, and protecting and fatherly and loving. And it just brought out, I would say all of my exceptional masculine qualities that I want to develop over my lifetime that are very healthily and positively and lovingly masculine. Now I am going to, you know, let go of that and imagine myself what it was like towards the end um, of the relationship. So, and stick with me. If you're going to do this exercise as well, I encourage you to do this to let go, you know, put yourself into the previous shoes and then let go of that. And I'm putting myself into those shoes of where I was towards the end, man. Okay. Towards the end, you know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling anxious. I feel nervous. I feel like I'm, I'm going to talk in first person. Like if I was that person at that time, I feel nervous. I feel, I mean, in a way you, I could almost even say excited because I was excited to, you know, have sex <laughs> and like be a part of her world mostly. And I felt still grateful. I still felt grateful that I could share this with that person. But I also felt unappreciated. I felt rejected. I felt like she didn't like me. I felt like she didn't want me. I felt like she didn't care about me. I felt like she was making me feel like if I was using her because she made me feel so unappreciated and so unattractive that the only reason we were having sex was because I was having a biological drive to do that instead of having it be a shared expression of, you know, love and emotions and soul and passion between us two. It just felt like, in a way, I was like angry because I it used to be so incredible and now it just felt like, nothing. It felt like there was no love. It just felt like a waste of time, a pastime. It felt like, it felt like two bodies masturbating with each other instead of two souls loving each other, which is what it used to feel like. It also makes me feel, I feel upset because I feel frustrated because I don't understand why it's different. I don't understand why if I'm doing my best to love you and, and give you the most out of me, why I'm getting so rejected and put down and attacked when all I'm trying to do is love you and just go back to that time that was happier before. And I'm trying to share that moment with you in every way possible. And it's just like, you don't let me. Also, I'm realizing that I feel like I'm talking to her right now. I'm really like deep into how it felt in the moment. So, you know, fully sink in. Um, man, I just feel unappreciated, unloved, uncaring. I feel in a way disgusted with myself because I feel like 
you as in she as in her is making me feel like I am using her for gratification without love because the love for some reason is gone now, even though I try to keep it back. So then I feel disgusted because I refuse to do that or share that experience of love and intimacy with someone that I don't love because then it just feels like two bodies masturbating with each other. It feels useless. It feels ill. It feels gross. It feels disgusting. And how I feel as a person is I feel angry. I feel sad. I feel disgusted. I feel frustrated because I, I am just trying to love and I am angry because I am not allowed to. I am not allowed to be in her world. I'm not allowed to be in your world. I'm not allowed to give you my best because all she does is push me back and push me away. It feels like she doesn't love me. It just feels like she is only with me because I have committed myself to her and if I didn't commit myself to her, then she wouldn't have anything to do with me or appreciate me or love me for who I am. It feels like she is with me, not because she wants to be with me, but because she doesn't want to be lonely and because she doesn't not only does she not want to be lonely, but she doesn't want to go through the rest of her life without someone like me who she can suck the life out of and make miserable. Okay. Cool. So now let me just whew, come back, come back, let go, you know, let go of that energy let go of that state where I was in, where I just imagined myself being that person again, going through those same things. And I would say, you know, even looking at the differences now that I've described that to you, oh, that second experience, I felt like this. I felt, I don't know if you could tell, maybe if you watched the video over again, I felt like this. I felt like I was shrugged over and into myself and it closed off and it felt like my heart was closed off. And it felt like, ugh, that's what it felt like. Ugh, it felt frustrating, it just felt so close. And it felt to me like I wanted to open it and you know, and like, tear it open and open it and like let my love out but it felt like inside my chest it was not safe to do so because every time I would try to open it she would like close it shut and shut me down and make me feel terrible about myself for even wanting to be open and share that with her whereas right in the first experience I would say it felt outward it felt happy it felt very masculine for me. It felt real good. I felt strong. I felt powerful. I felt like I was, um, it felt like I was doing something good for the world, not just for myself. And it felt like not only was I experiencing the moment and being in love with the moment, but it just felt amazing in general. And the second time just felt shitty and terrible. Yeah, so, wow. That got way more intense than I thought it would be, but now what I was gonna tell you is that this experience is really powerful because it will show you the before and after of your relationship as a whole. And sex is a very intimate part of it. Sex is something that we share with each other out of love and how someone makes you feel during those moments of like, being most vulnerable. And like, hear me out, being as a guy, vulnerable is not like the first word I go to. I understand that I feel like it's kind of like a fad now where like people say, oh, you should be vulnerable all the time. And like, as a guy, I understand what is trying to be said, but I don't feel like vulnerable is the right word to fully describe it. 
I feel like for me, courageous is more so the word because I don't feel vulnerable. I feel strong. I feel powerful. And being in those experiences, it made me feel like I couldn't be courageous because my, my courage was being shut down and, and slammed and ruined. And going back to what I was saying, this will show you the before and after of your relationship. I can say that the first moments that I had, you know, sex with her and showed those moments with her was a reflection of the relationship as a whole. I seriously was madly in love with this girl. I thought I was going to marry her. I thought she was the one for me forever. Like, and then, you know, that just fed into like the whole Disneyland fantasy that was in my head about, you know, soulmates and whatnot, which I, you know, I understand why that's such a like, societal idea but i don't think it necessarily fully makes sense anymore um that's a different you know thought for another day but i will say that um the way it felt uh, the first times we had sex was the way the relationship felt in the beginning and that was the love bombing stage and that's what i wanted to go to and the second part was how the relationship felt towards the end. It's how the relationship felt in the devaluing stage of dating a covert narcissist. And being able to put those as I just did with you, that was a live thing, I haven't done that before. Being able to do that, I can now see why I felt the way that I felt in the relationship because I was so stuck between the love bombing stage and the devaluing stage of the whole relationship that it really just tore me apart trying to keep on going back to this, the love bombing stage, because the love bombing stage just felt so good and so real when the truth is the reality was the devaluing stage was the relationship and and the, the love bombing stage stage was the you know the bait. It was the bait and she would hook me in with the bait and then uh, screw me over with the devaluing once I you know caught on the hook. And, and really that's the best analogy I could give for that situation. Um, so yeah, I encourage you, if you have seen me go through this exercise, you may be in a situation where you just say, I don't need to do the exercise because I totally relate. If you're a girl, you probably should still do the exercise because I, you know, I'm not a girl, so I can't explain that part to you fully. Um, yeah, with that being said, do the exercise if you feel like you need to. If not, I hope you understand, but I do think it will be powerful for your own psychology if you do that exercise. If you feel in your, your core, it will be helpful for you to do that exercise. Um, so thanks for watching this video with me. Thanks for helping me in a way work past my problem because now I get to see why that relationship happened the whole way. Now you understand that's the difference between how the relationship was as a whole and the love bombing stage and the devaluing stage. And I hope that um, that experience and that whole exercise of putting yourself in the two juxtaposing parts of your brain is a very good uh, tool that you can carry with you in your life. If you are confused about dating uh, or being with a covert passive aggressive narcissist, go pick up Debbie Mirza's book on the covert passive aggressive narcissist. That's the one I read. I thought it was incredible. It helped me out a lot. For the next 100 subscribers, as soon as we hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to do a $100 giveaway to one of you who's within the first 100 subscribers. So make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Go get your free uh, Legend wristband. Click the link in the description down below to get your free Legend wristband. Just help me out with shipping. I don't make any money off of it. I break down the numbers for you and everything. So go ahead, cop that. Help me as a creator. Buy some Legend merch. That was all my plugs for the day. So thanks for watching that with me. Seriously, more than anything, more than the wristband, more than the merch, just subscribe to the uh, channel down below because I want to help you as much as possible. And if you watch this video, it can be for a number of reasons, but mostly, you know, the universe and God and everything inside of you brought you to this moment so that you and I could share this experience together and it just makes me happy to be able to share that experience with you, to love you more, to give you more positivity in your life. And I hope that it helped a lot because at the end of the day, that's all I care about. I just wanna make your life a better place. So thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out, A-Town.